Hello everyone and welcome back to Helen's Honest Baking. This video we're returning to our quest for the ultimate choc chip cookie. I've decided to try my hand at Cupcake Gemma's recipe from her new book Crumbs and Doilies. I first came across this recipe in one of her videos from her self-titled channel, Cupcake Gemma, and I've been looking forward to trying it out myself because they looked amazing. She has a bunch of New York City style cookies in here, which is code for a large gooey cookie typical of those made famous by the Levain Bakery. I'm choosing to start with the Walnuts Choc Chip New York Cookie Recipe, so let's dive right in. We have a walnut allergy in the house, so despite these being walnuts Choc Chip Cookies, I'm going rogue on step one and roasting up 75 grams of pecans and 25 grams of hazelnuts for five minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I think they will add their own nutty goodness to the final product. So movie magic later and we have some roasted nuts. Now we move on to traditional cookie making, starting with 230 grams of cold unsalted butter, cubed up and ready to cream in the stand mixer. We start by beating up the cubes for a few seconds so they're more ready to accept the sugar. Speaking of which, today we're adding 160 grams of cast sugar and 160 grams of brown sugar. We cream these together, but on theme with the lumpy cookies, we only do that for 30 to 45 seconds, so we still have lumpy butter in the mix. Going straight in next is 300 grams of milk chocolate chips and 100 grams of dark chocolate chips. The recipe actually calls 400 grams of milk chocolate, but I ran out. By chance, I saw that Cupcake Gemma's other chocolate chip cookie recipe called for the mix of the two types, so I think I have a get out of jail free card on this one. Additionally, my milk chips are more pastilles, so I had to do some serious chopping ahead of time. I'm not really being faithful to the recipe here today, am I? Going in with these are our nuts from earlier. Again, we barely mix until these are just combined in. It's looking tasty. Next up, we're adding 200 grams of self-raising flour and 300 grams of plain flour. In some parts of the world, like North America, self-raising is a little harder to come by, but since it's just plain flour with the leaveners pre-mixed in, you can make it up yourself easy enough using any online recipe. And if that's too much, there's always Amazon, which I resorted to here so I could pretend to be a recipe purist. We mix that in again for as little time as possible, garnishing the bench if possible. Next up, we have a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of bicarb, and two teaspoons of baking powder to give these cookies their cooking powers. And in perhaps what is the most interesting part of this recipe, we add in two whisked eggs in last. This totally breaks cookie cannon, so I had to look it up. It helps to ensure you have a good dispersion of your dry ingredients first, and it prevents the glutens from forming too early since the eggs contain quite a bit of water, which is important so that our cookie texture stays soft rather than tough. Our dough certainly looks chunky and delicious, but slightly dry. Let's boil them up anyway. The traditional New York City cookie is a big hunk of goodness and Cupcake Gemma recommends measuring out the dough into 125 gram lightly packed balls. However, to be fair to our other recipes that we've tested, I'm using a medium cookie scoop again so we can compare cookies to cookies. Now the recipe actually calls for these bad boys to be frozen for at least two hours and ideally overnight. This is so the cookies come out more browns, chewier and with less overall spread in line with the New York cookie profile that we want here. Since I represent the average home baker here, I want to understand if it's really worth the wait for delicious cookies. So I'm going to split my dough here, baking half now and freezing half for later. For freezing, I recommend making up your own cookie balls on a small lighting tray, since you don't have to make room for cookie spread anymore. Likely your freezer is massive and we don't want the cookie to get fused to the metal tray. That's a fun little surprise for later. And here are our cookies. These are nice and chunky with some serious height. They look maybe a little over browned around the edges, but I had some trouble figuring out how cooked to aim for on the inside. And I'm wondering if the oven temperature being lower would make a difference. That being said, they do look the same color as New York City style cookies. Here you go, cameraman, for our close up. You can see here how gorgeous they are on the inside with those decadent semi-melted chocolate chips. So let's see how they stack up. For appearance, it's a four. Despite the browning, they look incredibly appetizing and the cross section was beautiful. In terms of taste, it's also a 4.0 because that nut flavor really comes through and elevates the chocolate to the next level. They're also not overly sweet, although I still would have liked a tad less sugar and maybe add a salty contrast. 
texture. I know I've got a 4.0 here, but in general, I'm knocking it down to a 3.5 because I found them a bit dry upon reflection and I personally prefer a bit more firmness. And finally, Ease gets a 4.0. Measures were in grams, everything was laid out clearly, and the method was easy to pull together. I'm really knocking it for not having shown temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Overall, that gives us a respectable 15.5. So Yossi is still in the lead, but these are an excellent cookie if you like chunky, and gooey, and especially milk chocolate chips like I do. And if you're wondering about that frozen cookie test, maybe my palate isn't that developed, but after baking them in the prescribed 15 minutes, my cookies really struggled to spread, and I didn't notice much difference in overall flavor. So while freezing is a good hack for keeping cookie dough on hand at all times, I don't think cooking them right away is going to be overly detrimental to the flavor. So here is Crumbs and Doilies again by Cupcake Gemma, a beautiful read with particularly stunning cake photos, available wherever you buy good books. And thanks again for watching Helen's Honest Baking. Please help others find the channel by liking and subscribing if this was useful for you. Next time, we'll be trying something a little more citrusy. Until then, happy baking everyone! Bye!